Hello, my little freaks. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm Noah. Today, we're going to be talking about politics. What? Politics are they're still going on? Well, unfortunately, yes. And something's been going on in political media, and it's affecting schools across the country. And it's been extremely frustrating to watch. So that's why I made this video, because more than anything, I'm annoyed. Legislation has passed in five states and has been introduced in 15 others that sets out to ban critical race theory from being taught in K-12 school curriculums. The phrase critical race theory has been uttered over 1,300 times on Fox News in the past three months. That's like 15 times a day. Safe to say, if you have grandparents, critical race theory hysteria is probably leaking out of some slash all of their holes right now. Any conservative media outlet that wants to make any money right now is talking about critical race theory, how it's indoctrinating your children, teaching them to be racist, and destroying America. The only problem is it's not. No, seriously, it's uh, it's not doing any of those things. This report by ABC News could not find a single K-12 through district where critical race theory was even a part of the curriculum. That's because it's a college-level academic study which focuses on the intersection between racism and the American legal system. So why are parents across the country showing up to their third graders' school board meetings to shit their pants and cry about something that doesn't exist? Well, for that, you can thank this guy. This is Christopher Rufo. Say hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Oh, brother. This conservative commentator is almost single-handedly responsible for hijacking the term critical race theory and turning it from what it actually means into a catch-all boogeyman phrase that encompasses everything from diversity training to discussing systemic racism at all, even To Kill a Mockingbird, the novel by Harper Lee, the one that's been in school curriculums for decades, was dubbed by one Republican state representative as yet another example of critical race theory creeping through our schools. The message in that book is made clear. White people are bad, black people are innocent victims. Hey, Quick question, how did you make it out of high school? Did you make it out of high school? Be honest. Chris Rufo's rebrand of critical race theory was akin to alchemy. Take a few screenshots from botched anti-racism seminars, a couple drip drops of elementary school discussions about white privilege, mix it together, sprinkle in some globalist Marxism, whatever that means, sure sounds scary, and then poof, appear on Fox News and present your findings and hope that the president is watching. Well, fortunately for Chris, and unfortunately for everyone else, else in the world, he was. The morning after Rufo's anti-critical race theory presentation on Tucker Carlson's show in September of last year, the White House hit him up, and three days later, Trump banned critical race theory with an executive order. Biden repealed this ban when he came into office, but it's a little too late. In states and school boards across the country, this has been the number one issue since the start of the year. Society is so fucked up, you guys. End society now. Let's get this trending. What Rufo did was create a framework for identifying and exaggerating things perceived to be reverse racist from anti-racism classes. With juicy, they're coming for your children headlines like school for forces third graders to deconstruct their racial and sexual identities, then rank themselves according to their power and privilege. This makes it sound like they lined the kids up at gunpoint and then made the white ones apologize for being white, when in reality, the whistleblower documents, so fucking dramatic, it's a slideshow, is just a seven page PowerPoint with worksheets on identities and how the kids view themselves within them. Call me a leftist loon, but to me, it seems like a perfectly reasonable exercise. And in nowhere does it make them compare each other's identities, as the article suggests. But to Rufo, and other disingenuous political actors like him, these incidents are all evidence of the widespread indoctrination caused by critical race theory. An evidence of your white children being oppressed in the classroom. Say that three times very slowly and you can make any Fox News viewer commit a hate crime. Just kidding. Or am I? Rufo found this term by going into the source material of some diversity trainings, books like How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi and White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo, and looked at their source material, some of which contained critical race theory scholarship, and then just kind of 
improvised. Branding. Ironically enough, poorly conducted diversity and inclusivity trainings are something which Kimberly Crenshaw, a founding critical race theorist, she coined the term in the late 70s, admits is something she sees from time to time. And when it happens, it's a problem. Key phrase, when it happens. Compared to how many of these trainings and classes there are, it barely ever does. But she attributes these incidents to the need of continuing conversations about racial equality. People want a shortcut. They want the one to two hour training that will solve the problem. And it will not solve the problem. And sometimes it creates a backlash. Despite this, I want to make it clear that she and anyone else with a brain is calling bullshit on these attacks. It should go without saying that what they are calling critical race theory is a whole range of things, most of which no one would sign on to. And many of the things in it are simply about racism. Oh my gosh, they're lying. That's so crazy. They're, they're lying. lying. Who, who could have, have seen, seen this coming? coming? When the person who gave critical race theory its name tells you you don't know what critical race theory is, you probably don't. Of course, you can share concerns with Rufo. That stuff in this class was maybe not age appropriate or structured the wrong way or talking about whiteness in a way that makes you cry like a little baby. Oh. Same goes for all of his examples. Critiques of these incidents are perfectly justifiable. But for him to then take the leap forward into presenting this as some sort of coherent ideology that public school teachers across the country are setting out to separate your children by race and kill Martin Luther King Jr. again somehow, it's a lie. And he knows it's a lie but he's doing it anyway. To give you a better idea of his real motivations, in a since deleted tweet from March of this year. Hey guys, editor Noah here. This tweet actually wasn't deleted. I just found it on an archive site, so I assumed it was there because it had been deleted, but it wasn't. All right, back to the video. Rufo wrote, the goal is to have the public read something crazy in the newspaper and immediately think critical race theory. We have decodified the term and will recodify it to annex the entire range of cultural constructions that are unpopular with Americans. Well, nice Nice job, Chris. You got what you wanted. If you're someone who is mad about critical race theory indoctrinating your children, you're not stupid, per se, but now you know you're probably only mad because this guy wants you to be. So we just looked at how the term critical race theory has been hijacked for the anti-anti-racism movement. Anti-anti-racism. Don't those, if those subtract each other out, doesn't that, doesn't that make it racist? Uh, never mind. Now I want to look at the direct results of this manufactured semantic nightmare in what is widely understood as the first major instance of critical race theory becoming a conflict in school board meetings. This is important to look at because it's the most consequential place in which the fight rages on today. With parents across the country in constant battle with educators and school board members arguing over something that some guy invented. And Marxism. Words are scary. In a world where Facebook moms have been watching too many Ben Shapiro videos, one mom will rise above the rest and speak out against the reverse racism and Marxist indoctrination. Uh, yeah, so it's this lady. Her name's Alana Fishbein. Say hi, Alana Fishbein. Hi. Alana Fishbein. Oh, fuck off. When George Floyd was murdered in May of last year, and a lot of people were talking about it, Gladwin Elementary School in Philadelphia, like many others across the country, saw it as an opportunity to develop lessons that might help their students join the frequent and often difficult conversations about race. Needless to say, Alana was not a fan. She sent a letter to the school calling the lesson plans to indoctrinate their children into the woke culture. I'll get into the lesson in a moment, but first, why why don't we look at what she said? Because if I say so myself, her letter is full of fun, interactive, totally not racist statements like, nothing in the materials addresses the very real problem of black bigotry towards whites. White students who attend predominantly black inner city high schools fear for their lives daily. Uh. But no one marches in the streets declaring white lives matter. Uh. Lana. Come on, Alana. Did you do a racism just now? Did you do a racist? You did a stinky racism in your pants, didn't you? Naughty. I was puzzled to learn that educators concluded that kids need additional lessons on equity and race. Aren't students already engaged in numerous educational programs to foster empathy towards everybody? Guys, don't you remember? We solved racism. I love you, you love me. We sang that together. Come on. I can say unequivocally that the United States of America is not a racist country and doesn't have institutional or systemic racism. Well, pack it up, everybody. 
academics, scholars, the jig is up. Racism has been debunked. This is a country that no longer keeps one race down to benefit another. People of color have been successful in all avenues of society, as Supreme Court justices, legislators, mayors, captains of industry, best-selling authors, and school superintendents. We don't have to talk about racism anymore because Kanye or something? She goes on to do some tropes about how the real problem in the black community is single motherhood. I wonder if this has any sort of systemic elements. Ah, better not look it up. And then cite some YouTube videos and oh, oh look, Ben Shapiro. He's in there. Hey buddy. Hey little guy. How you doing down there, buddy? Let's say you've been a bad girl. Let's say hypothetically you've been a naughty girl. Either. The school district at first didn't respond to Alana's letter. It's not hard to see why when you realize that this lesson plan was optional. So the school probably saw her letter and said, yeah, I think she's opting out. No worries, just take your kids off the list and let's move on like normal people. Alana, as you may have guessed, is not a normal person. This response didn't give her the attention she apparently needed, so she posted her letter on her school's Facebook page, where she, in her own words, was totally taken aback by the harsh criticism she received. In some places, it was like they were lynching me. Very clever choice of persecution methods there, Alana. Well, when all the other parents in your district are calling you a racist for doing racism, what else can you do but go on Tucker Carlson? Hey, remember that guy? What a coincidence. I was uh, totally taken by the harsh criticism. And in fact, in some places, I told them that they are like lynching me. Nothing says I've been lynched quite like I'm on national TV complaining about how it's hard to be white. In her five minute segment with this creepy little bugger, they both combine their half brains to lie about what actually happened at her kid's school. Tucker says one of the books in the curriculum, Not My Idea, told parents they were racist for supporting the police. It teaches children that their parents are racist if they defend the police or complain about protesters who are blocked the road. This is a lie. Here's a page from the book that I think they drew that lie from. By the way, I read the book for this video and it's uh, totally fine. <laughs> it's age appropriate, really well illustrated, and tackles discussions about racism for white kids and families. But if you disagree with, for example, showing your kids pages like this, you'd be, well, for lack of a better term, a, s a snowflake. But that's fine. Like I said before, you were able to opt out of the course. Tucker lied about that too, though. Gladwin Elementary School in Pennsylvania outside Philadelphia is now requiring fourth and fifth graders to read something called Not My Idea, a book about whiteness. Wow, this is so fucked up, guys. This is so messed up. Why would you lie? Why would you lie like that? That's so fucked. Oh. After this, her Facebook group, No Left Turn in Education, went from 200 followers to over 30,000 overnight. It now has 30 chapters in 23 states. It's one of hundreds of these types of groups. ABC's report showed 163. I don't know if that's hundreds or uh, over 100, whatever. They're designed to empower other parents by funding their opposition to schools and school boards in many forms, most notably by showing up at these meetings and being very stupid and very loud, sometimes even violent, and forking up thousands of dollars to help parents pay for an unprecedented amount of Freedom of Information Act requests. This is where they demand records of curriculums and other information, and the schools legally have to provide this, which, as you can imagine, has been just awesome for everyone. In South Kingston, Rhode Island, the parent of an incoming kindergartner submitted over 200 public records requests in two months, seeking copies of middle and high school curricula, lists of all books related to gender available in the library, and 10 years worth of harassment complaints and emails. The district said it would take 300 hours to compile all of the records requested. Hey, what's wrong with you? No, see, I, seriously, I mean it. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with your brain? We want to know, what are you teaching? What are you doing? Fishbein said. What are you wearing right now? Where am I? Is World War II over yet? You got any games on your phone? Flappy Bird? Yeah, so just being very annoying for no reason. More importantly, these groups exist to cast doubt on the education system as a whole and essentially tell teachers, hey, we don't trust you. You're too dumb and communist to teach my kids. So I'm gonna stand in the back of every single class, screaming and shaking and squirting wet shit out of my ass. Anytime you tell lies to my children, like racism is real, I'm gonna pull them out of class and wipe their memory using the men in black style device I have lying around my house for some reason. Hmm. Related side note here, this clip went viral of an Illinois parent debunking critical race theory. When you talk about critical race theory, which is pretty much going to be teaching kids how to hate each other. Look at that. 
Four seconds in, and he just, he can't help himself from lying. He goes on to claim that racism can't be real because he has two medical degrees. You gonna deliberately teach kids this white kid right here got it better than you because he white? You gonna purposely tell a white kid, oh, the black people are all down to suppress. How do I have two medical degrees if I'm sitting here oppressed? How do I get, first of all, let sign up, because only got five minutes now. Well, it turns out, this guy is Candace Owens' brother. Candace Owens of Hitler was only bad because of globalism fame. Personally, my favorite work of hers was when she said that George Floyd was actually a criminal and a drug addict a few days after he was murdered. Thanks for that, Candace. I digress. Her brother, this guy, is a YouTuber and guy who most definitely does not have two medical degrees. I feel like that would be written somewhere else on here, anywhere else, but it's not. He's not even a parent. So what is he doing at this meeting? Oh yeah. Grifting. Just like all these fucking idiots. I actually shouldn't call them idiots because they know what they're doing. Soulless, maybe, is a better descriptor. What's up, YouTube? Going into the school board meeting to destroy the American education system from the inside. Make sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> of course, transparency in schools is not inherently a bad thing. But demanding transparency because of a right-wing conspiracy theory, that is a bad thing. That's bad. My stepsister, Maddie, who is a teacher, she sent me this great Reddit post from r slash teachers. I want some idiot parent to accuse me of teaching critical race theory. Just so I can look at them across the table and say, gosh, I didn't even know that was a thing. Would you mind defining it for me? Also, I'd appreciate the titles of any of the academic texts you read that helped you understand it well enough to be able to identify it so easily. Bars. b b b bars Here's another gem from this thread. A student apparently got pulled from school because the teacher mentioned the Underground Railroad in a tangent that was related to the class. This is another big problem caused by this outrage. Now, talking about literally any historical event that involves racism can be cited by these deranged idiots. Sorry, my producer has let me know I meant to say misguided, well-meaning, concerned parents as proof that teachers can't be trusted. So, you know, just erasing history. Burning books, Nazi style. Opa, Nazi style. Op, 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 it's not not really funny. You guys are doing a 1984. You're doing it. You're being so Orwellian. Cut that Orwellian shit out. Yo, any of my homies acting Orwellian? I'm cutting them off. I don't need that fake shit in my life. I don't need the double stink. A personally injured law personal injury lawyer, sorry, named Jonathan O'Brien, when talking about the anti-critical race theory movement, said, Some people are treating it like a gold rush. This is a new area where people think they can either become famous or make money on the issue. And they're probably right. What's really funny about this quote is that Jonathan O'Brien is the lawyer representing Alana Fishbein. Remember her? You remember? So he's just going mask off and owning up to the grift. And Jonathan, I must say, I appreciate that. I wish more of your cum patriots were like you. Remember the war on Christmas? The idea that saying happy holidays or any other secular greeting is evidence that the left is trying to destroy Christianity from the inside or something? They're trying to disrupt and destroy traditions and replace them with their own version of some transitory nonsense. If you somehow don't, there's a fantastic video on this topic by H Bomber Guy. I watched a few days ago, and in that controversy, I see a very clear connection to the outrage over critical race theory. That connection being the whole thing is based on a lie, and its sole purpose is pumping cash into the right-wing media machine? The War on Christmas originates from an essay by Bill O'Reilly, famous guy who did sex crimes. Bill O'Reilly, the sex crimes guy. Bill, 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 Bill. He wrote this essay about a book called The War on Christmas, How the Liberal Plot to Over... Blah, 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 blah. The author is on record saying that in his book, he had never dwelled on the political implications of happy holidays or other greetings, and that Bill, the rapist O'Reilly, took that out of context and turned it into a nationwide controversy by going on TV and not shutting the fuck up. Legalize shutting the fuck up. And while you're at it, put Bill O'Reilly under the jail. He did this in the exact same way that Christopher Rufo took his group of essays and turn critical race theory into the nationwide controversy that it is. What's really scary about that is that we still, to this day, almost 20 years after the fact, get war on Christmas broadcasts every winter from Fox and others, all reverberations from the same bullshit earthquake. But this makes me wonder how long we'll have to be talking about critical race theory in K-12 through schools, something that also doesn't exist. How many years of work will it take to undo the harm that has been caused to honest discussions about historical racism in schools?
schools. And so for this last little bit, I want to take a look at some of the leading online conservative media outlets that are pushing this lie about critical race theory, because they're the ones who make it possible for the soft mind of the American conservative to continue to be poisoned. My brain is just as soft, if not softer, than the average American conservative. But I've managed to harden it significantly thanks to InfoWars Brain Force Plus technology. It's also giving me brain cancer. I think my brain hardening is like tumors. First up on our naughty list, little Christmas callback there, or should I say holiday season callback. Oh, liberal, uh, lib, uh, ho, 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 Prager you. These ghouls. They're a garbage fire of conservative propaganda funded by fracking billionaires with an almost Christ-like devotion to providing zero evidence for any of their claims. They have a very large YouTube presence with 3 million subscribers. Their videos have been viewed over a billion times, God help us, described by Mother Jones as the right-wing YouTube empire that's quietly turning millennials into conservatives. They released a video on critical race theory a couple months ago that has uh, 1.5 million views. It's narrated by James Lindsay, who is a guy with a math degree. No hate to the numbers community, but when the guy you appoint as your spokesperson for critical race theory and related issues has a math degree and only a math degree, you should expect to run into some problems. This video has some really great animations as PragerU always does, like this American flag being flipped upside down. Very scary stuff. It has already insinuated itself into many institutions and is making rapid progress into others. If it takes hold, it will completely change the very nature of America and the way you live. I imagine PragerU viewers watching this and reacting like a baby playing peekaboo. Yep, looks good. Nothing out of the ordinary. I don't have object permanency. Oh my god. Oh my fuck. Holy fuck. This is so messed up. This is so fucked. I can't believe what I'm seeing. I am smashing the like button and putting my kids in Catholic school this instant. Critical race theory holds that the most important thing about you is your race. The color of your skin, that's who you are. Not your behavior, not your values, not your environment, your race. Off to a great start. The summary is a bit of a misrepresentation. The source they cite for these claims is this essay. Look it up and read it if you want, but I mean, you might be noticing a theme here, right? They are taking concepts from academia and disingenuously summarizing them with the one goal of scaring people and boomers are getting confused and angry. Oh, sorry, millennials too. And that's basically what the rest of the video goes on to do. Imagine you own a shop and two customers enter at the same time, one white and one black. Who do you help first? If you help the black person first, critical race theory would say you did so because you don't trust black people to be left alone in your store. That's racist. If you help the white person first instead, critical race theory would say you did so because you think blacks are second-class citizens. That's racist too. That's critical race theory. A helpful tactic in debates and um, marriage counseling is to summarize the other person's point and make sure they agree with it before making your arguments. I think I saw this in The Sopranos. Obviously, anyone familiar with PragerU is probably asking, hey, why would you bring something like that up right now? But just imagine for a second showing that clip to a critical race theorist. That's critical race theory. They'd probably be like, hey, get away from me, please. Okay, flag, I like it, America. Oh, fuck. Not again. Not again. Honey, it's upside down again. Come pick me up. James Lindsay is having a lot of trouble looking at the camera for the entire video. James, are you not reading the teleprompter correctly again? James, would it help if we made it into numbers? Oh, what's two plus two? Oh. This is what leftism does to you. It makes you shit on math. Wait, I've been doing that for my entire life. Even when I used to watch Jordan Peterson. So sorry, JP. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Drawing distinctions between the races reached its peak in the 19th century with the widespread use of slave labor in North and South America. No one denies this. But since then, the Western world, and most especially America, has spent a lot of time, money, and blood breaking free of its racist past. It's been a rocky road for sure. A rocky road. That's an interesting way of putting it. Dude, slaves literally building the White House is just like mint chocolate chip. To critical race theorists, Martin Luther King was both wrong and naive. White Americans can never judge blacks by the content of their character. Hey, hey, that's me. That's me. They can only judge them, always unfavorably, consciously or unconsciously, 
by the color of their skin. Top 10 saddest anime conservative racist talking points, whitewashing Martin Luther King Jr. by taking him out of context to argue that the racism ended after the civil rights movement. I wonder if there is any evidence of Martin Luther King Jr.'s ideas that were elaborated on by critical race theory. Hmm. Hmm, this is so tough. This is so difficult. Critical race theory is then, in a very real sense, a counter-American revolution. Oh my fuck. Holy fuck. This is so messed up. But that's a positive, not a negative to those who subscribe to the theory. The American experiment was given a 400-year tryout, and it doesn't work. So let's scrap it. That's what they believe. Is that what you believe? No. No, James, please. I believe you. I Take my money. Here, take my money. Take it. Fracking billion. You guys need it. I don't need it. Our last video of the evening is from Campus Reform. It's just more free speech warriors kind of content. Imagine a stinky poopy pants shit pants girl. And you've sort of got the gist. Students reject critical race theory after learning what it's really about. It has like a 99.9% .9 like ratio. We're so fucked. Hi, I'm Ophelia Jacobson with Campus Reform. Today we're at George Washington University. Ophelia? There's, a, there's an E. Hey, change your name. Change it. Change your name to an A if you want to make it sound like that. So I'm going to read you a series of statements that kind of explains the basis of critical race theory. And then for each statement, I want you to tell me if you agree or disagree with it. So the first statement is the most important thing about you is your race. Do you agree or disagree with that? Uh, disagree. Read the fucking quote, Ophelia. Jesus Christ. The point we strive to make with this meta proposition is not that class and gender are insignificant, but rather, as West suggests, that race matters, and as Smith insists, blackness matters in more detailed ways. So you're telling me you read that quote, and your takeaway was, the most important thing about you is your race? Hey, I'm dumb and can't read. This thing that's bad is bad, right? Um, sure. Okay, I'm so glad we can agree that the Tulsa Race Massacre should be scrubbed from Wikipedia. Wait, what? So the second one is race rather than merit should be the main factor in hiring decisions. Ooh, no, not the most important thing that people look at, uh, but... Ooh. Oh, okay, okay. Um, let's read this one together. Critical race theory's critique of merit takes a number of forms, all designed to show that the notion is far from the neutral standard that its supporters imagine it to be. And she said, race rather than merit should be the main factor for hiring. If you're going to be this dishonest, at least remove the source that you clearly did not read from the screen. Actually, I, I guess it doesn't matter. The audience isn't reading it either. And last statement is racism is in every single interaction that we have as Americans. Do you believe that? Uh, no, I don't believe that. This one she didn't completely lie about, but of course it is out of context. And you can tell by these girls' reactions that they're reluctant to disagree completely with that statement. Uh, I don't know if I can say yes or no to that. Uh, I don't know if that's true necessarily. Do you think it's present in every single interaction? Um, no, not every single interaction, though. But Ophelia E is not here to debate. You know, knowing all of these things, knowing that these statements come from critical race theory, what if I were to tell you that all three of these statements are being taught to college kids, to kids in K through 12 in this country? Would you be surprised at this being taught? Yeah, I'm really surprised that it's being taught, and I don't think that's a good thing. Holy fuck, man. I can't do this shit anymore. It's uh, gross. I'm starting to see a pattern here. The more a person knows about a subject, the more likely he is to side with conservatives. The more a person knows about a suck, come on. Also, I like how he uses he when there's only one guy in the video. Whatever it takes to avoid using they, them pronouns. That goes against biology. Oh. Uh, and this is garbage media, I know, but I do think it's important to look at how to the audiences that consume this content, it makes sense somehow. And the reason for that is that they know what they want to hear before they hear it. So these disingenuous talking points really get them going hog wild. I wish there was an upside to this media being extremely popular and well received. Maybe after watching this video, you can try to convince your weird barstool tattoo having nephews to view this kind of information with a critical eye. But uh, until then, we are absolutely fucked. 
So where do we go from here? Well, from my lib head perspective, this entire conflict is clearly made up and anyone that looks into it for two seconds should be able to see that. So maybe we just need to get people to look, look into it for two seconds and it'll go away. But that's wrong. I feel like it's going to take a conscious effort from everybody to make sure that we're all on the same page. I do want to reiterate that the talking points and ideas espoused by these individuals are extremely harmful because while they might deny wanting to whitewash and erase history, this is obviously a natural consequence of the guidelines they're pushing for. In many of the statewide bills banning critical race theory, there are requirements that educators must give an unbiased presentation of current events because I guess they don't think condemnable racism it happens anymore. So something like the Charlottesville riots, they'd have to be like, so yeah, there were these neo-Nazi guys and they were chanting about Jews and all that, but they also wanted to, they wanted to do s'mores or something. So that's, that's something. Or reading something like this, objective facts about how systemic racism is real and does exist today. And then afterwards having to say, uh, or maybe not. Everything is subjective. Please don't cry. This is what happens when academic critiques go through politicians with an agenda first. They just end up looking really dumb, not that they didn't before, and making everyone dumber in the process. And there's plenty of thorough academic criticism of critical race theory, like this paper on hate speech and the First Amendment, which I believe is a response to an essay in um, this book. No, it's not a Nazi book. It just has one of the thingies on the front. So you may have noticed that there's a bookshelf behind me, uh, one that wasn't in my previous video. I bought all those books this week uh, to fill up that shelf and make me look smart, including this one. Silly viewer, YouTubers can't read. But my point is people can read this and then read this and form their own opinions on what seems right. But right now, that's not what's happening at all. In my heart of hearts, I do believe that good ideas will win out eventually, but even though older conservatives are dying, the new ones are somehow more annoying and definitely louder and a lot sneakier at making content, some less sneaky than others. But the fact that this misplaced outrage over critical race theory is still going on after almost a year should say a lot. But I guess we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out, as people throughout history have always said right before their societies collapsed. Anyways, video's over. Thanks for watching. This took a lot of work, but I had fun doing it, to be honest. Let me know what you guys thought. Sources are all in the description, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.